Hello, welcome back guys. This is Dr. Ajinka here. So this is a third case of OPD discussions where I started this thing called as the outpatient department OPD on YouTube. So whatever patients we normally get and how we investigate the patient, how we uh, take the patient's history to confirm a diagnosis, uh, how we come and narrow down a series of differential diagnosis and uh, depending on the radiological investigation, how we deduct the patient's uh, condition. Uh, so this is a third case today and this is actually uh, a case of nasal glioma now this is a very rare case usually nasal gliomas uh, which occur as congenital masses they appear in newborn babies just after birth uh, it may appear as a swollen nose uh, a lump on the nose it could be on the dorsum region or the glabular region uh, which is the extra nasal part of the glioma also, we can see uh, intranasal part of glioma, which is uh, present as a firm, uh, incompressible or softly compressible mass, but more, mostly firm in nature, intranasally, uh, just after birth, which may in either case obstruct the nasal pathway. And uh, we also may see some mixed forms of nasal gliomas. So we have three forms, external, internal and mixed. So as you can see on the screen right here, this is an adult female or uh, 25, 27 years of age, uh, which is a very, very rare case for a nasal glioma to occur in an adult female patient because normally we see those patients uh, who are just after birth, uh, congenital masses, but never uh, mostly in an adult. So I got this case. She was a female, 27, 25 year old female who had come to my OPD and with complaint of gradual uh, progressive right side nasal blockage. And on anterior rhinoscopy, as you can see on the screen, uh, we saw a yellowish white smooth surface mass in the right nasal cavity. But uh, the patient did not have much complaint of any nasal discharge, neither did she complain of any clear watery discharge, just gradually progressive nasal blockage on right side. The left side was completely normal, no problem in swallowing and as you can see on the screen she did not have any facial swelling or frontal headache or orbital swelling or vital pain, congestion, discoloration or any ophthalmic or optic nerve changes. Vision was completely normal. Only complaint for this female patient was gradually progressive nasal blockage right side over a period of one to one and a half years. She did not have any complaint in her childhood and this happened only for a period of around one to one and a half years. So this was a very interesting case and uh, this was the only history the patient had and on anterior rhinoscopy we could just see a white yellowish uh, smooth surface shiny surface mass that's it so we thought that it could be ac polyp because if it is unilateral or it could be anything which is uh it could be also infected polyp but infected polyp uh mostly uh, polyps are usually associated with nasal discharge which the patient did not complain of a lot so we had to think a lot so we did a anterior rhinoscopy after that we did the endoscopy of this patient and to my surprise, what I could see is that I had decongest the patient's entire right nasal cavity. So there's one thing very interesting here. Well, you cannot see the middle turbinate in the first attempt. If you can see, if I can just uh, zoom this for you guys, you can, slee, you can slightly see that this is the middle turbinate over here, over here. And that's the axillary attachment, which is very much compressed and this mass is pushing the middle turbinate laterally it means that this mass is medial to the middle turbinate and just lateral to septum so it means it is between the middle meatus that is it is between the middle turbinate and the septum and you can see it is having a stalk like attachment over its superior aspect it is having a stalk like attachment if i can just zoom it for you guys you can actually see it is having a stalk like attachment over here in the superior aspect which is not commonly seen in case of ac polyp or any other uh, you know polypoidal right sided unilateral mass so this could be an attachment so we thought it could be something coming from the ethmoidal uh, skull base 
because also it is pushing the middle turbinate laterally and it is present between the septum and the middle turbinate so it has to be coming from the cribriform or the ethmoidal skull base area mostly the cribriform because it is in the medial half so and you, ha you can see a proper stalk so we got the CT scan of the patient done and to my surprise the CT scan exactly showed what we had in mind so this is the axial scan which was not that helpful but i'll show you the sagittal scan first which is more preferable and um, as you can see on the screen this is a oval to spherical shaped uh, iso intense to brain soft tissue shadow you can see uh, coming or it can say attached to the area of the half posterior half is attached to the the skull base and the anterior half is kind of present near the area of the superior aspect of the nasal bone and the inferior aspect of the frontal bone so this is a case of a prolapsed brain tissue meningeal tissue or you can say a meningoencephalocele which has prolapsed meningeal layers or you can say prolapsed brain tissue along with meningeal layers to form it as a encephalocele uh, meningoencephalocele it could be anything which can be confirmed on biopsy which is a histopathological case in which if you can see the dura matter and the meningeal layers it is definitely a meningocele if it has having brain tissue dead brain tissue it could be uh, you know meningoencephalocele but uh, CT scan is not the only investigation which has to play a very important role as you can see it's a soft tissue shadow MRI becomes the gold standard so if you do an MRI scan uh, so we cannot know for sure that exactly that this could be a nasal glioma okay the nasal glioma uh, is not a clinical or a radiological diagnosis nasal glioma is 100 percent a histopathological diagnosis it cannot be diagnosed without histopathology no surgeon can ever say that this is nasal glioma or uh, just on the basis of patient history and uh, radiology only if only if the patient has got an MRI scan done and high surface coil MRI is being done and if a tract of CSF is seen continuous from the brain okay so if you don't if you do now this patient did not get an MRI done but I'm giving you this knowledge so if suppose this is an MRI scan and uh, this is a brain tissue there would be a CSF continuation from the brain uh, meningeal layers and extending into this mass so that would have been a proper meningoencephalocele uh, but if this is a case of nasal glioma right so this is a case of nasal glioma and we all know that nasal glioma is different from meningoencephalocele or the encephaloceles from one important point that most 85 to 90 percent of nasal gliomas do not have any intracranial stock of connection the intracranial stock of connection of the nasal glioma is never present it is a completely separated tissue congenitally which in this female patient after so many years may have prolapsed down from the regressed area so you cannot you can never see a stock of continuation if there is a stock of continuation with a csf uh, continuous seen on MRI it has to be a meningoencephalocele or an encephalocele it can never be glioma and even if the 10 to 15 percent of patients who have nasal glioma they may show a connection or you can say a stock with the intracranial cavity but that stock is not patent it cannot transfer CSF to this lesion over here so that stock even if though is present cannot transmit CSF fluid okay that is very common so always remember that the most important sign to rule out nasal glioma and meningoencephalocele is the fur Stenberg sign now I'll, I'm gonna spell this out F U R S T E N B E R G fur Sternberg sign is that when you compress the ipsilateral jugular vein or if the patient or the child is crying out loud and if the patient is straining this 
mass intranasally will bulge will increase in size and have pulsations that means it is having a continuous stalk from the intracranial cavity into this intranasal mass it means it has an active stalk and that becomes an encephalocele so for sternberg sign is always positive in patients of encephalocele but never ever positive in cases of nasal glioma in case of nasal glioma it will be always negative so this is how you differentiate nasal gliomas from your encephaloceles so this for that we have a theory and i'm going to show you that now this is a sagittal section of the embryological development of the uh, patient uh, when the child is uh, in the in uh, the prenatal stage when the child is in the mother's womb embryologically you can see this is a frontal bone over here that's the nasal bone so there's a gap which is present between the frontal inferior surface of the bone and the nasal bone which in future they fuse together and if they do not it leads uh, to a defect in the anterior aspect similarly we have a nasal cartilage over here which you can see labeled as c and this is the nasal bone and the frontal bone so there's a potential space which is present behind the frontal and the nasal bone and anterior or you can say front of the nasal cartilage and that is called which you can see over here is the pre-nasal space the pn which stands here is for the pre-nasal space and you can see all this bluish is nothing but the dural uh, contents, the dural layers of the uh, brain. And this is the foramen cecum, which is obviously open in case of embryological development. And you can see the dural prolapse happening over here. This is quite normal when these uh, the gaps are filled embryologically, when the neuropore is having its complete development, the regression takes place, the sutures are formed, the bones fuse with each other. But sometimes if the prolapse is there and the regression does not happen, it will remain prolapsed. And we can see that if there is a prolapse, and I can show you in this next image, as you can see, this is a foramen cecum. The dural prolapse is quite evident and present in the, uh, the prenasal space. Now, however, the frontal bone and the nasal bone have been fused over here to form the frontonasal suture but the pre-nasal space is not fused and the dural prolapse is quite evidently seen which is coming up to the dorsum of the nose just subcutaneously and um, this area uh, will have a prolapse and it will fail to fuse so below and anteriorly the foramen cecum the prolapse will take place and will go all the way up to the nasal dorsum so in the next photograph as you can see this is a normal thing this is a foramen cecum that's the cristagulli that's the fused frontonasal suture and that's the cartilage so normally if this this is a normal stage but if it doesn't happen it will lead to a neuroglial uh, tissue regression which we call it as the uh, glioma which is also called as the uh, nasal neuroglial heterotopia that's the other name for nasal glioma so this is how the process for the formation of congenital midline nasal masses like encephalocele and glioma takes place so i hope this concept of the embryological process of uh, the the midline nasal masses which are seen at birth is very much clear for you guys now so we never we never thought that this female could be having nasal glioma but only after the surgery which we had to perform on this patient it was a very short surgery, just like a half an hour surgery. We just have to remove the mass attached to the area and we had to char or you can say coagulate the, the basal uh, attachment because to prevent any future recurrence. So as you can see, this is a nasal bone over here and that's the frontal bone over here. The frontal and the nasal bone has been fused as I showed you sometime back in the photograph. but this is the area of the foramen cecum and you can see this is the same mass coming down from here prolapsing from here and then you can see it projecting like here but uh, this patient on first Sternberg sign had a negative response so she did not have any active pulsations in the mass 
So we had to operate on the patient and this is a mass which you can see over here which we had to remove and that's this this masses are normally firm and they also don't tend to bleed much because they are not that vascular so it's okay you just have to remove the mass from its attachment and you have to you know just coagulate the area of the the prolapse so that it doesn't have any future recurrence and the main concern over here is the histopathology because until and unless you are sending the path or uh, sample for pathology you are never going to know that this is a nasal glioma you will be just keep on thinking that this is a mass which is having an attachment in the cribriform plate or the the area of the uh, crystagli or the foramen cecum but uh, you just you're gonna think that it could be an encephalocele but the pulsations are absent you cannot see the pulsations here and on histopathology it is showing a group of glial tissue as you can see over here presence of cystic lesion having glial tissue lining all around the inflammatory cells at periphery so the main concern over here is the presence of glial tissue and the stratified squamous epithelium same image if you can see in a 400 power magnification you're gonna see if i can just zoom this you're gonna see by binucleate and trinucleate or multinucleate cells along with a cluster of the glial tissues so it is it is showing a lot of heterotopia over here that is why the name is also suggests it is a nasal neuroglial heterotopia so this is how we conclude that this is a patient with a um, nasal glioma and to our surprise this patient was an adult female of the age group 23 to 25 27 years of age i cannot be exact because of patient confidentiality so very young female and she was having a very recent onset uh, nasal glioma prolapse this was a very interesting case so at the start we thought that it could be an ac polyp not actually ac polyp but just an enteral polyp but then we uh, were proved wrong with the endoscopy because i could see on the endoscopy an attachment on the uh, skull base over here pushing the middle turbinate laterally it means that it was coming from the cribriform plate anteriorly and then we thought that it could be something a uh, lesion from skull base so we got the city scan done and the city scan to our surprise it was in eventually in fact a mass coming from the skull base posterior half and anterior half was just a prolapse from the pre-nasal space so this is a prolapse in the pre-nasal space which i just showed you some time back so if i can just cross check this city scan over here and this image over here we can see that this is a fused exactly this image and um, this is a pre-nasal space that's the nasal cartilage exactly this is a corresponding image over here that's the fused nasal bone and the frontal bone and this is a pre-nasal space so this is how the neuroglial tissues prolapse and we have to operate on these patients simple surgical exploration and removal do not forget to cauterize the base to prevent any recurrence and then always send the sample for histopathology and we get the confirmed diagnosis of the nasal glioma so this is how we, you treat the patient from the opd up to the surgical theater and post-op and i hope the concept of congenital midline nasal masses at least for the embryology and the nasal glioma is clear so far so if you have any doubts in this case opd case discussion number three let me know on my facebook channel my instagram page and my youtube channel in the comment section below till then guys take care thank you so much